people. Smith is the motherfucking arm here today. Of course, of course, of course, to give you Mikey OG Devils and Realists episode 9 review. This episode, no, what? Not, no, no, I actually liked it. I enjoyed it very much. It wasn't very much suspect except for one moment when the dude was unbuttoning his shirt. It, that was, but that wasn't really suspect at all, so fuck it. Basically, this episode, Hell gets attacked by Heaven. To, in order to, basically, divert attention away from William, so that they can perform ecstasy on William, to make him one of God's puppets. Whoa, what the, like, like, literally, this stuff was so, like, like, so like, holy shit, there's a deep meaning here, there's a deep meaning here, there's so many deep meanings, it's like, damn. I'm only going to talk about one, only one, and that will be a little bit later in the video. But the thing is, the thing is, basically, William has his ring back. He walked into, of course, I don't know what to call him, I don't know what to call him, man. Uriel, let's call him Uriel now, because come on, bro. His house steward name, you can't, really, you can't really call him that anymore. When he was a house steward. Mm -mm. He's Uriel now. Okay, the thing is, basically William went to his apartment, and he saw that he had his ring, and he took it back. So now, William passed Solomon's ring. I've been waiting for that shit. Finally, put the shit on, bro. Put the shit on. I want to see what he can do. I want to see what he can do, bro. I want to see what this nigga can do. And then basically he's asking him, because he doesn't have enough money to pay for his tuition. And Uriel's like, no, yeah, I look. I, I, if you would have came back to me last week, hell yeah, but this week I went double or nothing, and I ended up with nothing. So fuck. And then basically, glass breaks, William runs in there, what's going on? And he's like, oh no, it was nothing, I accidentally dropped this. It's okay, see you later. He basically sends him off and tells him to be warned, be careful. And then we find out that was because Michael was in that same exact room talking with Uriel. And he wanted to warn him because Michael has a plan. He is sending a girl named Jeannie. Jeannie. It has two ends. It's like Jean with two ends and an E at the end. So it's Jeannie. And the thing is, she is mad powerful apparently. And when we actually see her in this episode... Cause yeah, let's skip to that, okay? And so basically that's what's happening. And you tell oh wait, no fuck it. I won't skip to Genie no, just yet. Not just yet. The thing is, basically Michael tells him to perform ecstasy on William. If he performs ecstasy on William, William will die and his soul will be in the puppets of God. He'll be like he'll become a puppet basically. And then of course of course now this is when it gets a little complicated in the review. That's like the basic premise of the episode. And so I'm going to talk about, basically, the, the holy shit story that's going to be near the end. But first, of course, we found on this episode that Uriel and, of course, Solomon had a deal or a contract where Solomon would eradicate all of the demons, but he failed to do that and instead made pillars of these demons and made them more organized. And Uriel punished him for that. But he could not kill him, and so he lost a win. And now, he is being forced to kill William. And the thing is, he tries, and he opens up his shirt, and it was kind of suspect, but anyway. And he puts his hand on there, and some blue light comes out, and then vanishes. And he keeps trying, and isn't working. And we find out it's because William Twining doesn't believe in religion and God. And so he can't have ecstasy put on him, basically killing him. And so basically, Ragul comes out and he's like, you know what you got to do, don't you? You got to kill him. Because that's the only other way to get his soul into God's hands, is to kill him. Because he isn't a bad person, so he'll go to heaven. So far. And basically, Ragul finds out that they sent somebody out named Stylery. Not Stylery, it was on fucking... The first dude we met in this shit, oh my god, we haven't seen him in a long time. The dude with the fucking lightning, like, Galdeon or some shit like that. Or Galley. 
Like, G-A-L-L-I-E. That's, like, his name or some shit. Anyway. This dude. I'm gonna call him Galia. Ah, fuck. Ah, fuck. <sighs> shit. I wanna say his name right, but I just can't. It's too hard to fucking pronounce. So, let's just say... So let's just say, this dude is, well, fuck it, like, his dude came out, Galleon, fuck it, I'll call him Galleon, fuck it, his name is now Galleon, so fuck it, and you see, the thing is, we cut over to the fight with Hell, let's cut through that right now, and basically, there's an attack, and everybody, Dentalion's getting worried he has a bad feeling, and then in comes another one, and what does that mean? means one thing. Okay, what's up, people? I'm back. Fuck it. Fucking errors, batteries, and all that shit. Anyway, the thing is, we cut over to hell. Er, and in hell, basically, then tell you, and he's feeling like, what the fuck's going on? It seems, I'm gonna go back to William, and then incoming attack. Who's attacking? Gene. And basically, this dude sends an entire, like, army of like, local level demons at her, and she just eradicates them like that. And her thing is, she's like a holy virgin. And after she beats all these demons, she's like, the power of virginity. I'm like, <laughs> but it ties in later. The thing is, <clears throat> and get ready for this. Basically, because that fight was like nothing, it was just like her attacking, but then it, it's basically like nothing, because I believe that the fight stopped. And here's what happens. Basically, while s s fucking Galleon, while Galleon, of course, is fighting, something happens. Something really crazy happens. We find out that his past sins, well, it's like, it's like weird. I just can't say his past sins. Basically, he was in love with Jeannie, and she was taken by God's ecstasy. And she became one of his pawns. <clears throat> one of his pawns. Basically, she became a puppet of God. And so, in order to basically see God, what, is, what does he do? He commits every single deadly sin. He's killed. He's robbed. He's pillaged. He's sent thousands of men to death. And the thing is, it ties back in with... A very important one thing I'm, I gotta talk about, which I'm gonna talk about now, is when Solomon, when um, Uriel was punishing Solomon for disobeying his commands, Solomon said something like, it doesn't matter what your job is. Can't you realize that humanity, no matter how many times, will completely, no matter how many times you punish us, we will keep sinning. No matter what. Why? Because we find joy from it. And it ties in even more with Galleon at the end. See, the thing is, Galleon, he was in love with this girl. And then, Exodus was forced upon her. And she died before he could... Like, I don't know. He, he definitely didn't have sex with her because she was a virgin. And the thing is, after that, he lost hope in God. And he hurt, killed and destroyed and all that shit. And then, on the day of his execution, in came that motherfucker. Oh my god, that dirty ass motherfucker. Oh my god, what's his name? Fuck it. And it, fuck his name. Not right now. See, the thing is, this dude, that motherfucking dirty ass fucking, like, king of the underworld, like, that dude? Whoa. He came in and basically, like, become my pawn. Because she has become a saint in heaven. She's worshipped there. You become my pawn, and you have a chance to see her once again. Give me your soul. Otherwise, you can just go into nothingness. And basically at the end when he's about to get hanged, and I love the animation for it, I did. He got hanged, and he's like, I accept. And the thing is, we all, and then he was like, well, don't you want to leave and go, go meet her? And he's like, there's only one thing I want to do. And he's like, I want to fuck her and rape her, and I want to make her sin and drag her from heaven into hell. And the dude's really fucking twisted, this nigga. This is, Galleon's fucking twisted as shit. At first I was like, oh my god, it's a love story. Like, God took his love away from him, and so he defied God in order to meet God, so he could 
take care of back from God, like almost some legit shit. But no one just turns out he's a sick ass motherfucker. Like like legit. Like he wants Like and there was some that could have been there too. That was like the worst part. There was there was some that could have been there. But we don't know yet, because they still have yet to meet. When they meet, if they meet. We could possibly see some type of relationship between a guy and a girl go on that isn't like, oh, you're dying of old age. Like, you know, no, that was nice and all, but come on, bro, come on. Because I mean, that would that would be like a crazy ass love story, wouldn't it? Like dragging your woman back from heaven into hell. Like, like legit though, that would be a fucked up love story, but it'd still be a love story nonetheless. Anyway. And so there's that fight, and dude's doing mad lightning. He's then in all comes Uriel. He calls off, of course, the ecstasy because he can't. He had he doesn't want to kill William. He can't. And then basically he's defending Ragul, and then he breaks through, and then in comes the Italian for the motherfucking save, and basically he puts dirt. He puts fucking Galleon down. He's like, yeah, sit down, boy. You want to disappear into nothingness? That's what the fuck I thought. People would miss you. These little bubble miss you. And the thing is, once it went from that, it was basically Dantalian saying, to me, you're not Uriel. Uriel. You are just William's house steward. And he's like, and then he was like, oh, yeah. And Dantalian, you were just William's student. So they came to understand. Dantalian saved him, and so now they're somewhat like, even though we're on different sides, we'll still considered like we don't know what none about each other. <clears throat> and then near the end, Ariel's about to lose his other wing. And then something happens. And right before, of course, Michael takes his other wing, he's just like, oh my God. And he goes just like that. And he's then leaning over the table. And Ariel, the motherfucker's about to get like wingless. It's like, what's wrong? And he's like, just get out of my sight. I can't stand to see you. And then his eyes are open, and what I thought happened was, maybe God said, no, you can't take his other wing. We don't know yet. That needs more explanation, because I'm wondering exactly why he didn't take the dude's other wing. And besides that, William has a cold now, and that was the end of the episode. Oh my god, like, like legit though. That story, I really liked it until the dude went complete 180 at the end. It's like, no, I don't want to, I didn't do this just to see her again. I did it so I could fuck her. Like, legit, like, this dude did it so he could bring her down from heaven into hell. Like, the dude's fucked up. <laughs> fuck it, this was an 8 out of 10 episode. It was good. I enjoyed it. it was no, There was no suspect moments. There was fighting. It was some good kind of fight. It was one-sided, but it was still pretty cool, kind of. I mean, the dude was only defending, but I still enjoyed it. I mean, I love the lightning. I did. That being said, it gets 8 out of my fucking 10. Smith to the motherfucking R. I'll see you motherfuckers later.